Hi everyone, uh, I'm the Casual Spaceman and welcome to my channel. This is something uh, a little bit different from what I normally would do. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, last night, Ariane Space launched a Vega rocket um, to launch a satellite into sun synchronous orbit. And the customer was the United Arab Emirates. Um, it's an uh, Earth observation um, satellite. Um, and they lost it. They lost the rocket um, aboard this um, mostly reliable uh, rocket system uh, called the uh, it's called the Vega. Um, and I covered the live launch for it last night. Um, and pretty much this is how it happened. Well, what I do is I give you a little bit of background first of all. Um, the Vega rocket really uh, is a solid. Uh, propellant rocket. Well, it's a four stages altogether. Th the first three stages I, um, are a solid, or a solid rocket. Uh, so there's a little bit of information about the Vega um, and it's designed, as it says here, it's designed to launch small payloads, um, three to 2,500 gram satellites for scientific and Earth observation missions to polar and low Earth orbits. Um, And if we have a look at a little bit about the history of um, Vega, let's have a look. And altogether, there's been 15 launches. Um, the first in 2012. And look, if you can see, success, 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 success. And then here we are, last night's launch, 11th of July 2019, failure. That's the first ever failure um, of the Vega rocket. So. I think it came up as a bit of a surprise to um, Ariane Space, as it, um, I think it did myself. I personally hadn't heard of um, Vega until earlier on in the year, when I did actually watch a launch myself, um, which was on the 22nd of March um, earlier this year, um, and that was before really that I would uh, that I had um, started my channel. So that's why I didn't actually um, didn't actually share that at the time. Um, so yeah, that was the that was the first time I'd actually heard of um, the Vega, and when I saw there was another launch, I thought you know I'd I'd cover of the Vega, I thought I'd cover that. Um, so yeah, as you can see, a pretty much successful, um, flawless um, launches of the Vega. The Vega, as I said, is a or a light or um, light launch vehicle. Um, as I said, because it's a solid rocket system. Um, solid rocket system pretty much is a bit like a, a giant firework really once you light it it's lit um, and it's going to go and it just keeps burning um, until it runs out of propellant um, so yes you can't throttle back you can't throttle it up or anything like that so as you'll see from the um, the launch when I play it um, it's a pretty sporty rocket it's a very quick launch very very quick very fast um, so the stresses would be quite huge, but obviously they take that into account in terms of um, uh, calculating the thrust and um, the max Q and how much it can actually take and what have you as well. Um, a little bit about um, Ariane Space. Ariane Space, if you don't know about them, is a multinational company founded in 1980. It was actually the first world's the first, world's first commercial launch ser service provider. Um, and it involves um, all sorts of other different um, organisations that brings them together to produce um, these uh, these rockets. Um, many of you might have heard is the Ariane 5, um, that's their heavy lift, and the Soyuz 2, which they produce, which is their medium lift, and then this uh, Vega rocket, which is their light launch um, system. So that's a little bit about Ariane 5. Um, and a little bit about the launch history of Ariane 5, fairly reliable. Um, the last total failure, um, as you can see here from the timeline, um, the last one they actually had was in 2002. Um, I'm not quite sure what that was. Um, and they had a partial failure in last year with uh, the Ariane 5, I believe, when they uh, temporarily lost telemetry data while um, launching the satellites, uh, but luckily the satellites um, were launched successfully. Um, the customers picked up the satellites, um, but the, they did lose telemetry data um, of, that, of that particular uh, rocket during that time. So a partial failure, um, but at the end of the day they fulfilled their contract with their customer at the time. So the last total failure, as I said, was in 2002, so they've had a pretty good record. 
um, until that time. So again, um, that's why it was a little bit surprised. I mean, um, Arion Space have known for their um, for their reliability, particularly since uh, since 2000. Been a few um, other failures um, since their conception um, around this about a time. I mean, technology wasn't as probably as good it is as it is now. That's why we see more successful launches than we do failures um, these days. Um, so yeah, no big surprise. So yeah, a bit of a surprise for um, Ariane Space. What it actually means for Vega, um, that particular rocket, or what it means for Ariane Space, I suspect, I mean, they will have um, insurances to cover these sort of things, of, uh, naturally. Um, but what it would actually mean for um, their market share of the commercial launch um, market um, is difficult to say at the moment. And they are the biggest um, commercial satellite commercial launch um, company at present. Um, but as we know, SpaceX um, are on the up and up. They found a system where they can actually uh, launch satellites very, very cheaply. Um, so they're becoming very, very competitive, um, and they're rapidly catching up with air and space, and they are set to um, overtake them. So this could have an impact on Ariane Space. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. So anyway, that's a little bit of the background. So um, this is the launch I covered um, last night. So what I've done is um, I've fast forwarded all of the all the stuff before the launch, and I've got it up to the terminal count. Um, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the launch and see what actually happened. So we'll take it from here. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Top. Allumage P80 and décollage VV15 with Falcon. So as you can see, how quickly the um, the Vega rocket um, clears the launch towers. Um, very, very sporty. Very quick. So initial launch, um, all fine, all good. La propulsion du P80 est nominale. So at this point, it'd probably be ploughing through max Q. I'm not 100% sure what, at what point uh, max Q or maximum dynamic, dynamic pressure is, at what point it meets that on this particular rocket, I would suspect. It will be pretty early on because, um, as I said, it's a very, very sporty rocket, very quick. Um, so because they can't throttle back, um, they would take obviously all this into account. They can't throttle back to um, minimise dynamic pressures, but whether that had any bearing on this, I don't really know. But let's uh, let's go on and play this. La trajectoire est nominale. So the next significant event on this would be at the 1 minute 55 second mark where the first stage was to um, fall away and the second stage was to ignite. La télé mesure lanceur par la station de Saint-Jean-du-Marie. Ariane 5 est un véhicule plus lourd, qui rise beaucoup plus lentement, weigh 6 fois plus. Mais la Vega est en train de perfectement de la French Guiana, qui a la 15e mission de sa jeune carrière. Là, comme je l'ai mentionné avant, la 15e mission de la Vega rocket, comme le commentateur a juste mentionné. Elle pèse 138 tonnes à la liftoff. Ils la appellent le lanceur de comparé à Soyuz et Vega, mais 100 et plus de 100 tonnes n'est pas exactement featherweight, mais qu'est-ce qu'il va faire La première stage est maintenant, comme vous pouvez le voir. Il est produit en Colifero, près de Rome, par les gens de l'Avio, puis délivré ici à la French Guiana. Vous avez vu ça dans la vidéo sur le lanceur. Sorry, I forgot to mention, yeah, the um, launch was from um, French Guiana. Um, so we'll have a look at that and have a look to see if we can figure out the um, trajectory, what uh, direction they launched in um, from French Guiana. We'll, we'll have a look at that uh, um, a little bit later on this video. Campaign. The first stage weighs 96 tons. 88 tons of that are fuel. Most of any launcher's weight is propellant. The first stage burns its single engine for about two minutes before being jettisoned, and you'll see that, and you'll hear the DDO call that out. The launcher signal is, of course, being followed at all times. Right now, our first downrange tracking station on the ground is taking the signal. There's 
So coming up to um, the, the first stage drop off and the second stage to, to, to light. The station here at the base just behind us in Jupiter called Gallio. The second is a little downrange at a place called Saint Jean de Maroni here in French Guiana. So I think the um, the French commentator just announced the um, first stage um, and second stage to actually a light, but then you see what happens. And Allumage du Zephyr 23. The DDO has called out separate. See, all goes dark. Nothing seems to happen. Operation of the first stage coming right on time and ignition of the second stage coming one second later. Um, this part is just a, a graphic and an animation of what it should actually look like. But as we saw, as with most launches, I've watched quite a few launches, um, and you would al always, almost always see the uh, first stage drop away, or at least the second stage reignite. It'll go dark, and you see all sorts of colours and all sorts of effects would actually happen. But it just, as we saw there, it just went completely dark. So it would appear that the um, second stage failed somehow. This is what it looks like on the animation. Okay, sorry, there's a slight jump in the edit. Um, I had a phone call. Um, I was just about to say, um, if you look on the top right-hand corner, um, this is the uh, graph of the trajectory, uh, tra trajectory, I should say. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and this is the uh, altitude, and obviously this is the timeline. Um, so as you can see, this yellow um, line is the trajectory of the actual rocket, um, and it's following this uh, slightly lighter um, line, or grey line, um, and that's the expected trajectory of the of the rocket. Um, uh, but as you see, as we go on, that will change. So we're into the second stage burn. Second stage is called the Z23, Z for Zephyr. Will burn its solid rocket motor for 86 seconds. And again, if you're following the mass. And the fuel numbers, she weighs 26 tons and 23 tons of that. Um, a concerned phone call, by the looks of things. That are fuel. Coming up to separation shortly of the upper stage. While we're looking at people uh, more... So as you can start to see here, um, the trajectory isn't following that line anymore. Um, and somebody pointed out in the chat when I was broadcasting this that the French commentator actually mentioned about the degradation of the trajectory of the rocket. Um, so this is when we start to notice. And also um, somebody else that was watching also noticed this graph, which I hadn't noticed. Um, I was looking at other things at the time. Um, I was looking to check to see whether we were still um, live and still broadcasting and everything was okay with, uh, with the OBS system that I was using. Um, so I hadn't noticed it. So if uh, you're the two that mentioned those things, then please comment below. I'd be glad to hear from you. And I'll give you a shout out for next time, I'm sure. For Dramatis Persona, we're going to see the people from uh, ESA. As you can see, the invited guests filing back into the hall here after this very, very spectacular launch. Looking at some of the people from ESA, Charlotte Bisco, Vis uh, Vega is an ESA program. Over a thousand people okay. from... Uh, looking quite concerned there, but as you can see there's the other markers where um, the different events are supposed to happen, the different stages occur and things like that, and you can see clearly that um, that the trajectory is obviously changing or degrading. 400 European countries and industries have worked on development of the new launcher. ESA was operated, operator of the first six flights from flight uh, concerned looking director doesn't look too happy does he number seven in 2016 that role taken over by Ariane space who holds exclusive rights and at this point to um, market and sell the launch Ariane space have taken away all the telemetry or can't see any of the animation and things like that so um, I think that's probably at that point that they probably lost telemetry services is the remaining separation du Z23. Um, I can't speak French, unfortunately, so I don't really know what's actually being said. But um, obviously, um, kind of hints of something that might be going on. I was looking at this point, and I was thinking it was a little bit strange why we uh, can't see 
any of the data or the telemetry um, and concerned looking people so I was beginning to think something might be going on but I didn't really take too much notice of it is remaining the head of the Vega team and owner of the Vega launch complex of course Vega operating at an average launch rate of one to two missions uh, per year currently yeah. I think it would have been nice if the English speaker could actually translate um, what the um, the uh, French speakers are actually saying in these things. We might have got a, um, an, uh, a better understanding of what was going on, perhaps. So it would have been nice, I think. Um, so. De l'accélération. She's the only launcher in her class now in regular production. Separation coiffe. And the DDO is called out separation of the fairing. We can separate the fairing. Uh, well, he translated one page that said the separation of the fairing, although I think that's probably what they were going by the fact that that's what was supposed to happen. Or maybe, I don't know, the telemetry at that point was saying that it had separated, even though the, the um, second stage, uh, what we can actually see, um, hadn't ignited. So uh, but who knows? Fairing now, because we've made it about 120 kilometers above the Earth, we're out of the atmosphere. Passenger now getting its first taste the trajectory is très dégradé. Of, of space. Uh, I think it was that point there that, um, that it was announced the uh, degradation of the trajectory, I think, possibly. I don't, don't really know. I'm not a French speaker. I'm only, I'm only re-guessing at this point. The fairing protects the passengers from the jolts and pressures of the Earth's atmosphere. A word now from Armel Girard, the Mission Analysis Technical Authority. Send, send people down here. Hello, um, I they, am the... Then, for some reason, they cut to this uh, presentation. A little bit odd, in the middle of uh, a mission. We'll fast forward that a little bit. Uh, just an explanation, blah, blah, blah. So we go back to the control room. We have been informed... We have been informed that... Um, I think we've lost telemetry. Yep. There we go, that's the official um, of us being told that we've lost telemetry. We have a slight telemetry loss. I like that slight telemetry loss. You either lose it or you don't. <laughs> Flight director informing us that we have lost the telemetry link with the launcher, so we're waiting for word from Ariane Space. Uh, I'm going to fast forward it a little bit because um, there's not a whole lot said really up until. Um, this point here, where we get an announcement from the chief director, director of operations. So we'll go back here. Ladies and, and gentlemen, this is the as you have seen, about two minutes after liftoff, around the Z23 ignition, a major anomaly occurred resulting in the loss of the mission. On behalf of Iron Space, I wish to express my deepest apologies to our customers for the loss of their payload and telling them how sorry I am. The customer being uh, the United Arab Emirates, um, as you can see, um, there's a little bit of emotion in her voice. From the first flight data analysis, we will get in the coming hours more precise information and we will communicate to, to everybody at the soonest. Um, that would be normal standard practice with any space agency. Anything that went wrong, um, they would normally do that. So they wouldn't really say a whole lot until they've actually analyzed the data so they can give accurate information. Again, let me present my deepest apologies to our customers. Thank you. Um, and that was pretty much it, and that's what it sort of uh, ended up with. At least my broadcast ended shortly after that. Um, so anyway, let's see if we can what we can actually see in the news. Um, let's have a look. Um,
Okay, so that Ariane rocket launch figure lost, as YouTube videos, uh, The Verge, Space News. Let's have a look at Space News. Let's see what they've got to say about this. Probably not a whole lot more than we already know. Um, the 15th launch of the European Vega space rocket ended in failure on July 10th, resulting in the loss of the imaging satellite for the United Arab Emirates. The Vega rocket, built by the Italian manufacturer Evia, lifted off at 9.53 p.m. Eastern from Europe's spaceport in Coron. Uh, Courant in French Guiana on the northern coast of South America. Uh, telemetry data indicated a deviation from the rocket's intended course and here's the picture that exactly what we actually saw and uh, tel telemetry down here. Um, around its second minute of flight the rocket left its intended course during the second stage burn um, as we already know. Uh, Ariane Space of Envry France which markets the Vega rocket confirmed mission failure uh, nine minutes after liftoff as we've just seen. Um, this is just quoting what she actually said. Um, the failure is the first for the Vega, as we mentioned before, uh, a light lift vehicle designed to launch around 1,500 kilograms to low Earth orbit. The four-stage launch has been serviced since 2012, again as we mentioned before, and is Aerial Space's newest rocket. Uh, Falcon I-1, which was the satellite, was a 1,200 kilogram dual-purpose satellite designed to provide imagery for the commercial market as well as the United Arab Emirates Armed Forces. Ah, military satellite really. It was a bit of a disguise. Uh, built by Airbus Defence Space with uh, imaging payload from um, uh, Tails Allianz Space and the satellite draws on the technology from France's high-resolution Pleiades Imaging Constellation. Uh, the a second satellite, Falcon I-2, was scheduled to launch on another Vega rocket later this year. Um, now that timeline is likely to change, I'm sure it probably would change. I'm sure it would. Uh, Ariane Space has planned f uh, four Vega launches this year. The first took place in March 21 with the Italian Space Agency's PRISM satellite, which is the one I, s um, I saw earlier this year. The next plan uh, after Falcon 9 one was the small spacecraft mission service uh, ready share previously stated for September, carrying 42 small satellites, I should imagine. So um, how that affects all those launches that are planned um, is yet to see. I suspect um, if, uh, if it's a Vega rocket, they go, there's going to be a delay unless they can establish um, exactly what the problem was um, and cure that very early on. Um, I'm pretty sure that's going to delay um, delay those launches as well, um, any planned launches. So let's see if we can find anything else. Uh, let's have a look. Um, okay, well, there's been, that's apparently on Twitter from um, Aaron Space, there's been a press release. Let's have a look on Twitter, what's been going on there. Let's log on, probably the best thing to do. No, oh, it's not coming up. I wouldn't come, wouldn't bother using it. Um, we can just have a look at this. Let's have a look. Uh, read press release, approximately two minutes. Pretty much what we're already going to be hot told, really. Probably nothing that we haven't already heard. Um, Yeah, days and are in progress to clarify the reasons for this failure. An independent inquiry commission will be set up in the coming hours. Um, pretty much what you already know. Um, I'm taking this as the press release, the PDF, I guess. Let's have a look. Uh, it's all in French. Uh, oh, hang on. Here we go. Uh, mission failure approximately two minutes after the Vega's uh, launches lift off. Shortly after the ignition, the second stage... Um, a launch anomaly, uh, anomaly occurred leading to the premature end of the mission. Data analysis are in progress to clarify the reason for this failure. An independent inquiry commission was it. So yeah, pretty pretty vague. Um, not going to say an awful lot um, as expected. Um, and that's the same with probably most space agencies. Um, they won't commit to, to knowing, uh, saying what it, they think it is until they know what it is. Um, but who knows what actually caused it? We don't really know. All we know is that the second stage clearly didn't ignite um, so that's where we are with it um, so as I was saying before it, 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 it might well be a little bit of a worry for Ariane Space because although they've got insurances to cover these kinds of things um, future 
customers will be um, looking at this. They would have known about it. Um, and key decisions made whether they would go with Arion Space or um, another company. And with SpaceX um, coming rapidly through and taking over um, a bigger and bigger market share of um, commercial satellite launches, um, who knows what, how this, what sort of impact this could actually have. Um, as it stands at the moment, um, SpaceX are very successful um, at launching satellites. Um, I think they only had one that blew up on the launch pad, I believe, on the Falcon 9 um, last year or the year before. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, it, who knows what the space, uh, what the um, future of Ariane Space will actually look like and how it's going to affect them. Um, we we'll shall we shall see. Um, so if you get any, if I get any more news, if I hear anything else, um, I will let you know. Um, but let's just have another quick look back and see if there's anything else um, that we haven't heard already. Uh, space flight now, that's always a good source for um, launches and things like that. European Vega launcher Wednesday launch for about two minutes after lift off. French launch service provider charge blah, 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 blah. as you've seen about two minutes left between the two seconds mission major normally occurred, resulting in the loss of the mission. Um yeah, pretty much what we already know. There's the graph again. Uh tracking from the also suggested something went wrong about the time plan of the mission of the Reg Vegas second stage around two minutes after lift off. Um, a range operations director known by the French acronym DDO inside the Jupiter Control Center in French Guiana announced ignition of the second stage but soon confirmed the launcher was not on its planned trajectory. Well he's saying that the it was um, uh, he announced ignition of the second stage but that could be that that's the time it was supposed to happen perhaps I don't honestly know um, unless somehow the um, telemetry did actually detect that they, it, it would have ignited, but maybe hadn't. Who really knows? Oh, so here's some useful information. The top speed achieved by the rocket according to telemetry data included in Ariane's webcast was approximately 2.17 kilometers per second, or 4,850 miles per hour at plus, uh, plus 2 minutes, 13 seconds. The telemetry plot then showed the Vegas uh, um, velocity decreasing and the vehicle uh, deviated below its planned ascent trajectory before falling into the Atlantic Ocean north of the Guiana Space Center. There we go. Uh, fell into the um, into the Atlantic Ocean. That's what's, uh, what they think has actually happened to it. The Zephyro 23 motor, the second stage, was to fire for 77 seconds, then give way to the Zephyro 9 third stage and a liquid-fueled fourth stage. So, as I said, the first three stages being solid rocket. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, what else have they got to say? It was not immediately clear whether the range safety teams on the ground activated the Riga's um, rocket's uh, destruct system after the launcher began losing altitude. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that would be actually normal pretty much normal standard practice with most people they would have a straight self-destruct system uh, if anything actually went wrong um, as you, if you look through YouTube there's lots of launches of them exploding um, in midair and what have you as well where they've actually um, uh, blew it up basically um, in a press release uh, later Wednesday night, Ariane Space said anomaly occurred shortly after ignition of the Vega second stage. Yeah, pretty much what we've seen. Um, Wednesday night's failure was the first of the stage la first of the 4F Vega launcher after 14 consecutive successful missions since its debut in 2012, as we talked about earlier on in this video. Yeah, so pretty much nothing we don't already know. Um, as I said, if I hear anything else, I will let you know. And I think really that's um, all I can actually say at this stage. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you find it informative. If you like the video, please like below as always. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon as well because then you'll be notified when I upload more videos. Um, I won't cover all different launches um, because it, sometimes it's completely inconvenient within my lifestyle. Uh, I didn't mind staying up late last night because I didn't have anything going on this morning. Um, so it doesn't always work out with every single launch. But when it comes to SpaceX launches, I will try and cover most of them or all of them if I can. Um, because they're always the most exciting. 
So that's me from the Casual Spaceman. I'm signing out, and space is real. You have a great day. Thank you for watching.